so this is our second page of notes for, for DAP on the moles. And we're going to do two teaks on this one. We're going to do 8B. And 8B says that you're, you're going to use the mole concept to calculate the number of atoms or molecules in a sample of material. So use mole concept to calculate the number of atoms or molecules. And a lot of times we'll just call them, since we're not caring which one or the other at the moment, we just call them all particles. That way we can input atoms or molecules or ions or, or electrons or whatever it is we're talking about in a sample of material. So we're going to use the mole concept to calculate the number of atoms or molecules, particles, in a sample of material. And then 8C, you are going to calculate the percent composition of compounds. So what percent of water is made up of just the oxygen? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to look at your yellow pages. Page 2. Because this actually has the calculations that you're going to be doing. You don't have to memorize this stuff. You have to be able to use your yellow pages. Once you do this often enough, you'll be able to do this. So page 2 on your yellow pages, grams to moles, moles to grams, moles to molecules or atoms, molecules or atoms to moles, back and forth like that. So look at page 2 on here. And the first thing I'm going to do is talk about changing grams to particles. How do you do the calculation? If I want to know I've got 10 grams of something, how many atoms is in there? So what you do is you write down what's given to you in the problem. In this case, they're going to give you the number of grams. And then you're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And a conversion factor, and by the way, this is what dimensional analysis is. A conversion factor are two things that are equivalent to each other. Like one foot is exactly equal to 12 inches. In this case, the molar mass of a substance is exactly equal to Avogadro's number. So we want grams, our unit in grams, to cancel out. So my mass, which is always measured in grams, is going to be on the bottom. So we have the molar mass of the substance on bottom, and we have Avogadro's number on top. And you'll either put atoms or molecules or whatever it is, but I'm going to put particles right here because that's a little bit more uh, generic. And that's going to equal your number of particles. When I say show your work, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to put the numbers in the equation and show the work that you're doing right here. If I want to go from particles to grams, I'm doing just the opposite. Write down what they give me in the problem, which is always going to be some number that they give us. So particles to grams, I'm going to go just backwards from this. So they're going to give me number of particles, number of atoms, number of molecules. And I'm going to multiply it by the conversion factor, because I know that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is always going to be equal to the molar mass of a particular compound. Always. They're exactly equal to each other. You have equivalences that way. In this case, I want my particles to cancel out, so I'm going to put them on the bottom. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. I want my answer in grams, so I want my molar mass, which is in grams, mass is always in grams, on top. And this will give me the number of grams. Okay, and we're going to practice this so this won't be just obnoxious to you at all. We'll practice it a lot. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, 8C, is you're going to calculate percent composition. And again, this is on your yellow pages. If you look at page 1 of your yellow pages, we have the formula for per percent composition. Make sure you don't get it confused with percent error and percent yield. Percent composition is right here. So percent composition is really pretty simple. Percent composition. Percent composition is the percent by mass of each element in a compound. Percent by mass, because we're talking grams, of each element in a compound. You might not have to calculate every single element. They might just ask about one in particular, but it's still going to be talking about that, each element in a compound. 
could even do something like this, our lab this week, is you're going to find the percent sugar in gum. So what, what percent of the composition of the gum is sugar? So again, that's percent composition. You could even do that for you know pizza. What percent of the composition of pizza is this, mix, is this sauce made up of? So you'd have to mass everything out and then figure out what it was. So when you do percent composition, what you're going to do is you're going to say the mass of the element that you're interested in divided by the total molar mass of the compound. And it's a percent, so then times 100. And that's what's going to equal percent composition. Now, there's one other piece I'm going to throw in here in this case, and that is percent error. Because when we start going into these labs and the labs become quantitative, what we can do is we can figure out, well, how far off were we? And that's what we talk about when we talk about percent error. And in percent error, what you have is you have, open parentheses, you have the observed value. That's what you got in the lab. What did you observe in the lab? Minus the what we call the theoretical. This is what it's supposed to be in a perfect world. Close parentheses, all divided again by the theoretical, what it's supposed to be in a perfect world. And since it's a percent, it's times 100. That's your percent error. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice on these.